dear friends, it's Carly, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the latest episode of the I Learned Podcast. I am sitting in my office with my cup of coffee, and I got both dogs laying on the floor next to me, and this morning I am still, still in this like serene content afterglow of yesterday, basically. And it feels really amazing to just, this morning in my journal, I wrote and wrote about my day yesterday and all the best parts and all the cool things and all the the best moments and just lived it all over again. And I am just so blown away. <laughs> Five years ago, I worked at a software company that produced contractor management software, and I was one of the tech nerds, and (laughs) then I all of a sudden find Abraham, and five months later, I quit that job, and I'm a free agent. I got nothing. I got nothing going on, and then I manifest Cecil Case out of the clear blue sky. And now I'm a grocery consultant to help other people open grocery stores. Like, it really got me thinking about day one of committing to my daily self care and why I did that. Like, where I was and how that decision came to pass, how that commitment got made. Because now for five years, I have completed daily self-care. And every every day, minus a three-week period, which is a story for another day, right after Cecil K's opened. Um, but I learned my lesson. <laughs> so five years minus three weeks. And otherwise, daily self-care. And why did I do that? Because that kind of consistency, A, is out of character for me. And B, is pretty impressive to to complete something every day for five years. And my results, I feel like to me, they speak for themselves. So I could not be more satisfied with where I am five years after picking up this practice of daily self-care. Um, and I, I came to the realization as I sat with this, this thought of why did I start this process to begin with It truly was, like that morning, July 9th, 2016, it truly was a matter of saying either I'm going to have a happy life or I don't want one anymore. My, My only purpose in any of what I was committing to was happiness. I was tired of feeling rotten. I was tired of feeling jealous. I was tired of feeling insecure. I was tired of being chronically depressed for like 15 years. I was so fucking tired of contemplating suicide again. Like this will not be my life anymore. So it was very much like I feel like a rock bottom moment of figuring out that what I had been doing was clearly not working if it had brought me to this dark place yet again. So why not try something new? I was that ready to be happy. And that readiness, I mean, it was just palpable that morning that I will have a happy life. I will do that. I will I will do whatever it takes. Whatever is required of me to produce my happy life, I'll do it. Bring it on. Show me what I got to do. At that point, I had a handful of tools I had awkwardly learned to meditate, um, and I had done it a couple of times, and I had had one really interesting experience with meditation, and so that was at the front of my mind, and that's what led me to look for YouTube videos that morning for guided meditations, and that's how I found one from Abraham Hicks, and that led me to their other content, so that that finding Abraham, it was like within the first couple hours of that day, I was ready here when, you know, like exactly like the quote, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. It was like fucking literal that day. So 
enter Abraham. And, you know, I talked yesterday, uh, a couple episodes ago in pretty good detail about my transition out of the software company. And now I really want to talk about like what happened after I left, because this is, this is where life got really good. You know, I very early on, like probably January, February, I was, I, my channel was wide open. I talked yesterday about, about my channel and how the work that I was doing with my journaling and Abraham and focusing into this every single day and like trying to raise my vibration and be a little bit happier every single day. I'm not trying to just be blissful all of a sudden, you know, two days after I'm depressed, I'm willing to take one step forward every day at every once in a while, maybe even a step backward or two, but then the next day I'm going to take another step forward and I'm going to take another step forward. And five years later, I've taken a lot of steps forward and my life looks nothing like it did before. So I was seeing that very early on. And as I left the software company, my intention was basically to say yes to whatever life put in front of me. I was practicing my hell yes energy. And I did talk about that as well in episode two. Uh, I listened to that episode a lot because it's such a fun reminder of being on the lookout for that hell yes energy and letting it guide me. And so (laughs) it was so amazing in one of my morning time sessions, I think this was like January, February, one of the visions that I got was I was on stage at an Abraham event, like in the hot seat is what they call it. And, you know, it depends on the event that you go to, but there's anywhere from like 500 to like a thousand people in the audience watching you ask your question and have your conversation with Abraham. That's why it's the hot seat. And I had a vision of sitting in the hot seat and being face to face with her, Esther Hicks, who channels Abraham. I was face to face with her. And that was, that was the main part of the vision was like face to face with her and her energy. And I could feel it. And it was so overwhelming and it was clear as day. I could see it. I could see her face. I could feel her energy. It felt real, except it was a vision. So I have this in my mind and I'm like, well, that only seems logical that someday I'm going to go to one of her events and I'm going to, I'm going to sit in front of her. And that vision, it just, I thought about it a lot because it felt really, really good. And a few days later, I'm in my morning time and it popped into my head that my one year anniversary is coming. Like I'm on such a roll. I'm doing so good. I've, I've done daily self-care at that point for, you know, um, what would it even be? like seven months ish. And I felt really good that like I was going to hit my one year anniversary and how cool would it be to go see her live at one of her events on that one year anniversary. So I pull up her website and was like, let's just see her list of events and I'll get as close to the anniversary as I can. And I'll, I'll go. It felt like hell yes energy. And I pull up the list and I scroll to July because at this point, this is still five months in the future. And where will she be on July 9th? Well, actually July 7th, she departs from Seattle on a cruise to Alaska. Um, and she returns, I think it was like the 12th and yeah, five days. That sounds right. And so a five day cruise to Alaska in which she gives four sessions, of like four three hour sessions, and you're also on a cruise to Alaska that makes five port stops. And it's like an all inclusive deal where you just have a card and you go to all the restaurants and all the bars and you just have whatever you want. They just give it to you. Um, it was already hell yes energy <laughs> before I saw that it was a cruise to Alaska. So, you know, like six grand to go on that. Um, yes, please. Hell yes. So I booked it like immediately and just was like, okay, so in July, I'm going to Alaska with Abraham. This is amazing. Fast forward to, I absolutely went on that cruise. It was probably the most magical week of my life easily. Um, the whole while 
all of it coming to fruition because of the vision that I had of being face to face with her. And so we go, or we, I go to the sessions and I made friends there. So that's, you know, I was, I was a lot with other people. I was so different than I've ever been. I was, I was very outgoing and open and trusting of strangers and of myself. And it was, it was absolutely beautiful. So anywho, I I go to the sessions and basically how her sessions work, if you're not familiar, um, she's on stage. She gives a little bit of an intro, like maybe 10, 15 minutes. And then she takes questions for three hours with a couple breaks at each hour. There's a, I think 15 minute break or something like that. And so the questions, they give them about 10 to 15 minutes per person to be up there and have a conversation for 10 to 15 minutes. And then you go back to your seat and she takes the next question and you physically get out of your seat and go up there and be on stage and on camera and all of this. And yeah, it's, it's a whole production. And so the first session, um, I was so, Oh, and I'm like back in it right now. I can feel it. I was so buzzing with the energy. Like it was so high. The, the vibration of that room was so high and I was not practiced at that vibration at all. So it was like very, I couldn't even imagine trying to like walk up there, let alone having anything coherent to say. So I didn't even raise my hand. I didn't even try the second session. Uh, one time granted, like how many times in three hours is she asking for questions? Um, well, at least 12, you know, like there's multiple opportunities at every single session to raise your hand and get called on and go to the front. And I think the second day I raised my hand one time and it was probably the scariest thing I've ever done. And I've done a lot of really fun things and raising my hand, putting, putting my, extending my arm in an upward motion, scariest thing I've ever done. And (laughs) she did not call on me. And I was so fucking grateful (laughs) that she did not call on me. It was like overwhelming how grateful I was that I didn't get called on. And that's why I didn't raise my hand anymore at that session. Cause I was like, you know what? I'm just going to soak this up. I'm just going to take it in. This is not my last opportunity by any means. So I'm just gonna, you know, let this unfold and follow the path of least resistance. If it freaks me out this bad, I don't have to raise my fucking hand. That's not required, dude. Like I'm only I'm only doing it because I had a vision of being face to face with her and the logical path forward seemed like I'm going to have to raise my hand and go up there and talk to her. And I was kind of pushing myself into it thinking like the whole point of the cruise was to be face to face with her because that's why I came because of the vision that I had. So the third session, (laughs) I raised my hand twice and the first time I did it, um, it was almost as scary as the first time, but when she didn't call on me, I wasn't nearly as relieved. I was, I felt a lot more energetically adjusted at that point. And like, no, I, I could probably go up there. I could, I could probably do this. Like, I still wasn't totally sure, but like, no, I think I'm, I'm way closer than I was yesterday. I could definitely tell that. So I raised my hand a second time, the second time. <sighs> my fucking heart stopped because she pointed right at me. Turns out it was the girl behind me, but her pointing at me, oh my God, new scariest thing that had ever happened to me. Because again, I cannot even begin to tell you how freaking relieved I was that it was the girl behind me and that I didn't have to leave my seat and go up there because even just her pointing at me was more than I could take. So, which sounds so funny. So fourth session, I don't raise my hand. I, I had this really, it was like the most beautiful aha moment of my entire life, probably still. And I was so content and I was so serene and it all came together. And it was like the perfect 
perfect picture of the joy is in the journey, which is, you know, something that a lot of people say, and I've heard it a million times, but like, I had never, I had never accepted it as deeply as I was in that moment where my original vision and intention for coming on the trip to be face to face with her, I was going to allow it to be unfulfilled for this trip at least, and be really, really, really fucking grateful that I came on the trip at all. Like it, the trip was so magical. I mean, that's a story for another day. So magical day by day by day, the unfolding, just the directions and the rendezvous and the, the signs and the synchronicities and everything was on point the whole time. I was like, no, I'm not fulfilling the original vision for why I came, but oh my God, I'm glad I came. There is nothing unfulfilled about any of this. The joy is in the journey. It doesn't matter why I thought I needed to come. I am so full of everything that's happened while I've been here. And at that point, I also kind of like sank more into following the path of most fun. Like if something sounds like fun, walk towards it because you don't know if it's even like that thing that sounds fun. That's the reason you're supposed to walk on that path. It's probably not. You're probably going to do other things along the path and meet other people along the path. But you went on the path because it was fun. It led to a fun destination. So my vision of being face-to-face with her got me on the cruise. And it served its purpose. The joy is in the journey. I don't need to be attached to the outcome that I thought I was coming for. And that felt, oh God, it felt so good. It was like a relief. It was like, I don't need to make anything happen. I can just follow my impulses, my instincts, these visions that come that feel so good that lead to this hell yes energy that had me book a cruise five months in advance and then prepave it like crazy in those five months. Um, It was totally worth it. This had been the most magical week of my life already. And this was all my energy as I'm sitting in that fourth session. And then, so that's the second to last day is when she does the fourth session. And the next morning, this is, this is kind of complicated to explain because I, one of the friends that I met, her name was Sue and, or is Sue. I haven't talked to her uh, in four years, but her name is Sue and her flight She had a one-way flight to Seattle because she left it all open-ended. She's like, I'm just going to do whatever unfolds. And whenever I'm done in Seattle, then I'll book a ticket back home. And she had time to do that. And she was just going to let it unfold. My flight was like 12 hours after we were supposed to get off the boat in Seattle. So I had 12 hours in Seattle before I needed to be at the airport to go home. And we made a plan that like, let's, let's do something you know, whatever we feel like doing that day, but yeah, let's do something that day. And that decision was magical all by itself. But because of that, um, I was taking my luggage off, but she had like concierged her luggage or something like that, where the night before we got off the boat, she put her luggage out there where they took it off the boat for her. And then you have to go claim it. And so I wasn't planning to do that. I had my luggage with me. I could have gotten off the boat at any time, but because her name, her last name was like at the end of the alphabet, she had one of the latest departure times off the boat. Um, because they like to pace how many people are in that claim area. So it's not just a giant clusterfuck. Anywho, so we ended up sitting on the boat until like 1030. I could have got off at seven, Um, but we sat there, we had breakfast, we talked, we drank coffee. Like it was, it was fun and easy. And we looked around on the internet to see what do we feel like doing today? And very, very leisurely. So they finally call her group. It's her turn to get off and go claim her luggage. And we head for the exit. And as you get off the boat, they scan your, like your card that you've been using as your all inclusive pass to get whatever food and drink you want. They scan that card to see if there's any outstanding charges. And if there are, then you can't get off the boat. You have to go pay your charges. So you have a zero balance, then they'll let you off the boat. So I, I had an all inclusive thing and I only ever used my all inclusive thing And they wouldn't let me off the boat because I had outstanding charges. And I was like, that doesn't 
make any sense because I didn't charge anything that wasn't included. But I was like, this day and this week is far too magical for this to be anything less than a freaking miracle in the works right now. And I literally could not wait to see why I couldn't get off the boat yet. I was already marveling at I was getting off the boat three and a half hours later than I had planned to because of Sue and our friendship that we'd struck up. And now they weren't letting me off the boat. I have to go settle these charges, which are clearly not mine. And so I go back over to the desk, the go back inside and go back to the desk where I'm going to pay these off or figure it out at least. And so I'm standing there and both the people working the desk, there's two of them. They both have a customer and I walk up and I'm the next person in line. So I was like, I trust wholeheartedly that the first customer to finish is going to be like the customer service rep that I'm supposed to work with this about. Um, that's the person that I'm supposed to meet. And one of the customers finishes up, grabs their stuff, walks away. I walk up. Um, now this gentleman is helping me. And I tell him what's going on. You know, they wouldn't let me off. They say I have pending charges. I don't think I charged anything. Let's clear it up. And he pulls it up and he reads off the charges. And one of them is an airport shuttle that I had booked a couple days prior before I had met Sue and made the plan to go with her. I had just booked a shuttle to the airport and was planning to spend 12 hours at the airport. Um, and when I made the plan with her, I had forgotten to cancel the airport shuttle. And basically their policy was that there's no refund request. That airport shuttle already left and I basically just didn't show up for it. And there's no refund request for that. So I'm going to need to pay the 30 bucks or whatever it was that I booked that shuttle. And I, and the other charge was a couple drinks at one of the bars or whatever that was like fancy champagne or something. And I was like, I only ever drank the, <laughs> the stuff that they comped. Um, and I drank plenty of that, but I never got any fancy drinks. So those aren't my charges. And he was like, okay, so I'm going to remove the drink charges. And I'll tell you what, like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to refund you on the airport shuttle and we'll just close this out. I was like, really? Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I was totally prepared to pay the 30 bucks. Not needed. Okay, cool. So I, you know, he closes that out and I'm free and clear to go. I go back to Sue. She has found uh, what we're going to do for that day. And we go back to exit off the boat. And this time they scan my card. I'm free to go. They scan her card. She's free to go. And here we go walking down the gangplank. And I'm like, what is this? Like, what, what is happening? My path is being so guided. It's being so steered it feels like like just maneuvered and very much put into the perfect place at the perfect time like what is this gonna be I was just like buzzing with how magical it felt <sighs> and I was so in my head that I didn't even notice and Sue had to tap me on the shoulder and she very calmly leans over and says do you see who's in front of us? And I looked and I'm shaking my head, like looking at her, like hair, clothes, walking style, people with her luggage. I, I, I don't recognize any of it. And so I look back at her and I was like, an old lady? <laughs> I was being funny. And she's like, that's Esther. And it fucking was, it was Esther Hicks walking off the ship five feet in front of me. I'm, I'm five feet behind her walking all the way off the boat and I couldn't help myself. I was so excited. I, I was like giddy and I'm sure she heard every bit of it. I didn't ever like, I, I didn't ever say anything. I didn't ever like ask her to turn around or anything like that. I just was like, like blown away. Absolutely shocked that oh my God, like all of that contortion to my path of like me staying on the ship a few extra hours and because of Sue's baggage claim ticket and having those charges, like, which it's just like even, oh my goodness, like even if I had remembered to cancel the airport shuttle, 
somebody else still accidentally charged drinks that weren't mine to my card just so that I wouldn't get off the ship the first time. And that was like, I could have even remembered to cancel the airport shuttle, you know? And then he refunded that, which he totally didn't have to do. He didn't have to be even close to that cool. Um, all of that transpired so that I could walk off the ship right behind this person that I had listened to every day for the past year and who had changed my life in such radical ways. And again, I didn't feel the need to talk to her. I felt totally blessed and blown away at even just walking off the ship, staring at her backside. Um, and when we got down to the bottom, she went this way. We had to go the other way. And we got, uh, we got Sue's bag and we turn and like walk towards the exit. And again, she is standing right there, like halfway between where we were and the exit. And so we're going to walk right past her again. We're going to be like right there within the vicinity of her. And this time when we walked by, I, which I don't touch people. I don't hug people. I don't, I'd rather not shake your hand. I don't really do the physical touch thing very often. And yet I reached out and with the back of my fingers, I lightly just rubbed her arm just like a tiny bit, just so she would look at me. And I just looked into her eyes with all of this love pouring through me. And the only words that I could get out were, thank you. And she looked back at me with basically the same vibration. And she said, thank you. And she like, oh my God, it was like one of the best moments of my life. And in the end, the vision had come true. There I was face to face with her saying the only thing I really needed to say to her, which was thank you for her life's work. Basically, I got to say it. I got to say it to her face. And the only time she's available for like customer client interaction, like is on stage. <laughs> and yet the universe found a way to manifest me not having to be on stage and still getting to be face to face with her in a way that only ever felt magical. It didn't feel fearful or like anxiety inducing. Like it felt when I was in the audience raising my hand it felt easy and joyful and like the path of most fun. And oh my gosh, it, oh yeah. Like I said, one of the best moments of my life. And <laughs> I, I genuinely believe that there was really something in what happened in that fourth session where I sank into the joy is in the journey. The joy is in the journey. Like it's not about getting anywhere. It's not about getting to any destination. There's no goal. There's no place that I'm trying to get to. I just want to be happy. I just, that's where I started five years ago. I just, I want to have a happy life. I want to be happy. I want to feel good. I want to be satisfied with my life. That is my only goal still to this day. And lots of things along the path have unfolded to help me see that the joy is actually in the journey. That's such an annoying thing that you get told back when you're trying to manifest specific shit. And I'm here to tell you that like, if you will focus on joy and that's it, just be happy. If you can be happy, you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Don't, and just like let the universe handle the rest of it. Because when I got home from that cruise, I moved from Dallas to Kansas and we took the keys to the Cecil K's building and I spent eight more months working on that remodel. And then we opened a grocery store that's now been functional for three and a half years. And now I'm a grocery consultant where I lend my expertise to other people opening their own grocery stores. I, I didn't write any of that. The universe did all of it. Like I heard Abraham say yesterday on one of the recordings about like this guy, he's basically saying, I just want to get the idea so I can run with it. And she responds, the universe is already running with it. 
you can run along with them. Like you can run along with that energy, but the universe has been running with it long before you ever even show up to it. And that's just so true. I was really thinking about Cecil K's and how that came to be because I'm a 50, 50 like co-founder and I didn't come up with that idea. I didn't secure the $1.2 million of funding that we needed to do that project. I didn't do any of those things. The universe was running with it long before my cousin called me and asked me to be a part of it so that I could have a hell yes moment and say yes, easy peasy. Like, it's just, it's amazing what the universe is truly capable of lining up. Little things along the way, like those drink charges on my card, those were days, days before I was deep deboarding the ship and walking right behind her. The universe, the universe is capable <laughs> of brilliant rendezvous that lead you to exactly where you want to go. But the whole key is like, we can't be in charge and let the universe be in charge. So staying general with our goals and deciding that I, I'll do whatever I have to do to be happy and I'll let the universe take care of the rest. That's what I practice. And I hope that this story helps you lean a little bit more into practicing it for yourself because the universe can, this is Abraham direct quote, the universe can surprise and delight you beyond your wildest imaginations. The way that they can weave together everything you love all your skills that are your favorite skills to use, they can put them all together. Doesn't matter if you think they fit together or not, the universe can find a way. And grocery is a perfect example of how the universe did that for me. I am a perfect fit into the grocery industry. I have the passion for it. I have the, the wide variety of skills to do the job. It, and I never would have thought of that on my own. And I still didn't, even for my own store, somebody else came up with that idea and invited me into it. And that call, that invitation to come into the, like the unfolding of your dreams, that call can come at any freaking moment. At any freaking moment, you can find yourself walking off the ship behind Abraham, <laughs> your, your new idol of, you know, worshiping basically every day for a year. Um, worshiping is probably strong. Being grateful for channeling gratitude towards this person and the way that she has chosen to live her life and being grateful that I even came into contact with it. And then the universe <laughs> led me right to the understanding that the joy is in the journey. It doesn't get much sweeter than that. Mm. This might be my favorite episode ever. I, again, I love living these things. I love telling you about them. <laughs> 